going to start. Now you stay there, John. <laughs> so the story behind, what's your name? Mark. 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 The story behind the Hollis was basically, I wanted to, I, I, I've been building bikes for a long time. Okay, custom bikes, Harley Davidson's and everything else. And, and it was kind of like, we need something different. Okay. What bikes have been built in England this day and age? Not a lot. Do you know what I mean? So as we can call a British bike. And so it was kind of like, I needed something different. Okay, and so this was where the Holly sort of like came into really. It was like, let's build a series of bikes, limited edition, only 10, can't afford anymore. Okay, and so the design aspect, okay, what we're going to do, okay, it's just going to be a little country runner. You know, so you just jump on it, go down to the pub, you know, maybe a little sat now, take you back home or something, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, so um, it was two years, two years in design and development, okay, from sketching out, okay, and then we come up with this little design, keep it simple, vintage look, classic looking, give it that vintage look, it needs style, it needs elegance, it needs something where, you know, you turn up at a pub, do you know what I mean, and you got something really, really different, and that was what it was all about, and so therefore that's how the, uh, the Hollis uh, came about. The um, crikey, the um, I mean, to get it onto the road, okay, there were so many conformities we have to sort of like apply, you know, adhere to, and certainly with um, the likes of um, the DVLA and Rosa, you know, so it has to conform <laughs> to the road and everything else. So that took us about that took us about uh, about a year and a half to get all the legalities and the paperwork done and everything else, so we could make a presentable bike okay for uh, 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 for people and uh, and that's really where it came from you know something different yeah and made in england yeah i'm sorry we're, and to keep it british we have to have everything we have to have 90 percent of the parts have to be from the uk yeah yeah and that's it yeah and so and so that's where it came from really um all with the modern stuff on it, so we had the Brembo's, we had um, uh, Brembo design the package and, um, and what have you. Um, so we got disc brakes all around, we got modern shocks, the, um, the twin, you know, the twin, um, uh, twin shocks on the back. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, there's only a limited edition of 10, that's all that will ever be done, okay. They are complicated bikes to build, they take, they, there's something like around about 16 weeks, isn't there? Yeah, 16 weeks to build them. They're all from scratch. We have the jigs and everything, and so they're manufactured. Um, um, you know, we take our time. Everything's TIG welded. We have, you know, we have. Uh, we use the best of the steels, the best of the best we can on them because we want them to last. You know, so we use the Talon wheel hubs, um, beautiful wheel hubs on them. Um, as far as the engine package goes, okay. So. That was that was a difficult one because we wanted we wanted a, a, a British history engine, okay, and so we thought something that's easy to repair, easy to use, okay, not going to cost a lot of money to uh, service and, and, and repair if anything, you know, and we just thought well, the Royal Enfield has the history, from, you know, from the old British and everything else, so we thought well we'll just put one of those in there, yeah, you know, and there's it. How you get on with them, you, you know what a Royal Enfield is like, you know, if you set them right and you look after them, you know, everything's fine, yeah, they're fine. And of course, um, all the clients there, yeah, they enjoy the rides. Half of them are getting stopped along the road because nobody knows what it is. What's a hollow? you know, and it's just like, there you go, that's it, really, well, yeah, that's it, yeah. Uh, Deuce Machina, yeah, I believe there's only about six of them around or something on these bikes, actually. Uh, commissioned by Norton, the factory, um, on the build. Yeah, yeah. So, so they can have whatever whatever they want. We will, we will, um, you know, we will always um, you know, try and help people. You know, it's like with the bikes, everybody wants, you know, what they want, and they'll get what they want. And so we will build. Yeah, a right from scratch. We will start right from scratch. And um, really depends on sort of like you have the sort of like the low end, the mid range, and then the top end. We, I can meet all criteria. Yeah, I can meet all criteria, and of course the best the, the best one is our is our uh, Gerda Forks. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which is the KTS uh, KTS range. It's very similar to the uh, to the Hollis Taipei uh, Gerda Forks, and um, yeah, universal. Yeah, 
yeah. Fit a lot of old bikes. We have the Panther on, over there. 19, what's that, 1950? 1951. 1951 Panther with uh, uh, the Hollis Taipei girder forks on it. And you wouldn't know the difference unless he was a Panther enthusiast, you know, kind of like specialist and what have you. And they work very well, work really well. Yeah, yeah, work really well. So, um, and then of course we have our kind of like, you know, more elaborate designs like you see on the, on the curly bike. <laughs> yeah, and it's very quite something else. It is, yeah, yeah. Well, we're, you know, it's, it's all kind of style. I love my curves, yeah. you know, I love the flow, like, you know, so um, apply that to, you know, two wheels and, um, and, uh, and you'll get what you want, yeah. Yeah, and it's like everything, labour of love, isn't it? Yeah. And I'm still poor, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rich because I got my kids. 